Hi friends, welcome back to Curious With. I am Dr. Mohsena. In today's video, we will uh, see the third systemic mycotic condition after histoplasmosis and blastomycosis. Today's topic is cryptococcosis. So let's begin. Cryptococcosis is a systemic fungal disease that may affect the respiratory tract, especially the nasal cavity, CNS, eyes and skin, particularly of face and neck of cats. The causative fungus is Cryptococcus neoformans and Cryptococcus gatae, exist in the environment and in tissues in an yeast form. Infection occurs worldwide. And the fungi are found in soil and foul manure, especially in pigeon droppings. Transmission is by inhalation of spores or contamination of wounds. In avian droppings, it may occur in a non-capsulated form as small as 1 micrometer which can be inhaled into the deeper portions of the lungs. Cryptococcosis is the most common in cats but also seen in dogs, cattle, horses, sheep, goats, birds and wild animals. In people, many cases are associated with defective cell-mediated immune response. Coming to the clinical findings and lesions. Let's see the in bovine cases first. Bovine cryptococcosis have been associated only with cases of mastitis and many cows in a herd may be infected and these cows have anorexia, decreased milk flow, swelling and firmness of affected quarters and enlarged supramammary lymph nodes. Milk become viscid, mucoid and grey white with thick white flakes. And in horses, this uh, disease, the cryptococcosis, almost invariably is a respiratory ailment with obstructive growth in the nasal cavity. So, this is an endoscopic image of a mycotic granuloma caused by cryptococcus neoformant in the nasal passage of a hose. And in horses, they can also cause cutaneous lesions. This is an example of cutaneous cryptococcosis in hose. You can see the ulcerated nodules in the ears. Especially in the medial side of pinna. In cats, so this disease mostly uh, is it's very important in cats. In cats, upper respiratory signs secondary to nasal cavity infection are most common and include sneezing, mucopural and serous or hemorrhagic unilateral or bilateral chronic nasal discharge, polyp like masses in the nostril, a firm subcutaneous swelling over the bridge of nose, cause the, uh, it is called the Roman nose. So, these pictures show uh, cryptococcosis in cats. First one is nasal cryptococcosis, the left, uh, the image on the left side. That is chronic monolateral nasal discharge and mild nasal deformity. And in the right picture, you can see severe nasofacial swelling and deformity. So, let's see the clinical condition uh, in cats in detail. First one, cutaneous form. Cutaneous lesions are more common and are characterized by papules or nodules that are fluctu fluctuant to firm. And larger lesions tend to ulcerate leaving a raw surface with a serous discharge, serous exudate. So this is a cutaneous cryptococcosis. You can see the severe lesion in a, in a three-year-old female domestic cat. Next is the ocular form. Ocular abnormalities may also develop including dilated and responsive pupils and blindness due to exudative retinal detachment, granulomatous chorioretinitis, panophthalmitis and optic neuritis.
so this is a picture of a uh, cryptococcus is condition in cats characterized by neuroretinitis and focal retinal detachment the next is the cns form Neurologic signs associated with cryptococcosis of the CNS may include depression, changes in temperament, seizures, circling, paresis and blindness. Systemic form Systemic forms may occur through hematogenous dissemination and manifest with signs of meningoencephalitis, sorry, meningoencephalomyelitis, uveitis, chorioretinitis. That this will have also the ocular ocular forms. Then osteomyelitis and polyarthritis, systemic lymphadenitis, multi-organ involvement, including the kidneys. Cranial vena caval syndrome with severe edema of the head and neck are recent, uh, was recently reported in a cat affected by the development of a cryptococcal mediastinal mass compressing the vein but also the esophagus and trachea. Apathy and cachexia appear in cats with severe dissemination during the prolonged chronic course of the disease. Systemic form arising from dissemination may or may not follow classical nasal disease. Though this is thoracic radiography ventr ventrodosal view. Of a cat with systemic cryptococcosis, you can see diffuse, multiple, poorly defined nodules with blurred margin in the lungs, lung of a cat. So, this is a form of systemic cryptococcosis. So, this is all about cryptococcosis in cats. Now, in dogs, in contrast to cats, dogs often have disseminated disease with CNS or ocular involvement. Clinical signs are often related to meningoencephalitis, optic neuritis and granulomatous chorioretinitis. Lesions in the nasal cavity of many dogs have been reported but they are usually not the primary finding or reason for presentation. Approximately 50% of dogs have lesions in the respiratory tract, usually the lungs, and most have granulomas present in multiple systems. The, so, so the structures often involved in, or, in the order of decreasing frequency are kidneys, lymph nodes, spleen, liver, thyroid, adrenals, pancreas, then less involved are bone, GI tract, muscle, myocardium, prostate, heart valves and tonsils. Lesions associated with cryptococcosis vary from a gelatinous mass consisting of numerous organisms with minimal inflammation to granuloma formation. The lesion is usually composed of aggregates of encapsulated organisms within a connective tissue reticulum. The cellular response is primarily, is primarily macrophages and chain cells with few plasma cells and lymphocytes, epithelial James chain cells and areas of gaseous necrosis are less common than with other systemic mycosis. So here the cellular response is primarily macrophages and giant cells and areas of gaseous necrosis is less. Coming to the diagnosis of cryptococcosis, the most rapid method of diagnosis is cytologic evaluation of nasal exudate, skin exudate, CSF or samples obtained by parasynthesis of aqueous or vitreous chambers of eye or by impression smears of nasal or cutaneous masses. 
gram stain is most useful the organism retains the crystal violet whereas the capsule stains lightly red with saffronin india ink is also used to visualize the organism which appears unstained and silhouetted against a black background it is not as definitive as gram stain unless budding is seen because lymphocytes fat droplets and aggregated india ink particles may be confused with the organism so this is a gram stain image of cryptococcus neoformans uh, note the large size of this budding is com uh, compared with the small gram positive cocal bacteria present in this uh, in this uh, picture and the large capsule of the yeast is barely visible Right stain has been used most often in diagnosing canine and feline cases but this stain can cause the organism to shrink and the capsule to become distorted new methylene blue and periodic uh, per, uh, periodic acid shift stains pa stains are better than right stains for this reason because the uh, right stain caused the uh, uh, capsule to shrink organism to shrink and the capsule become distorted so this is a, a tissue smear which is right stained of cryptococcus neoformans that is budding uh, daughter daughter bud cell budding from the large yeast and uh, large capsule not visible and it is slightly distorted with this stain but see the another uh, uh, right stain image this uh, arrow indicate the budding organism so if the budding uh, organism is present uh, this smear with right stain is clearly visible but if the uh, budding is not present it is difficult to visualize the capsule because it will be the cell will be shrunken and distorted because cytologic evaluation is rapid impression smears or potassium hydroxide preparation should always be made of suspected cryptococcal lesions if no organisms are seen a biopsy of the lesion can be taken so if with an impression smear uh, no organisms are seen a biopsy of the lesion can be taken and part of the sample can be used for culture and the rest process for routine histology the organism can be stained with hnd but the capsule does not stain with hnd so this is the section of lung with cryptococcus numerous variably sized yeast are present in the terminal way so this is a uh, stain with hnd hematocel and eosin you can see that the capsules are not stained well The organism is more easily visualized with PAs and gomorimethanamine silver stains but the capsule does not stain with these either So with HND PAs and gomorimethanamine silver stains the capsule are not staining good The best stain for cryptococcus is Meyer musicamine because of its ability to stain the capsule and immunofluorescent staining can uh, can also be used so this is a musicamine stained picture of cryptococcus neoform uh, neoformans it also stains the organism and the capsule so this is the best stain the large capsule and the thin cell wall of cryptococcus differentiate it from blastomyces cryptococcus by its budding and lack of endospores can be distinguished from coccidioides immitis so it can be differentiated from blastomyces by the large capsule and the thin cell wall and from coccidioid coccidioides immitis by its budding and lack of endospores Detection of cryptococcal capsular antigen in serum, urine, or CSF is a useful rapid method of diagnosis in those suspected cases in which the organism is not identified. A latex latex agglutination test is commercially available in kit form. Antigen titer can also be used to help determine response to therapy. 
The organism can be cultured from exudate, CSF, urine, joint fluid, tissue samples if a, uh, if a large enough sample volume is available and sabrod agar with antibiotics is used if bacterial contamination is likely. Now let's see the treatment of cryptococcus. Fluconosol 2.5 to 10 mg per kilogram per day or itraconosol 10 mg per kilogram per day are considered as the treatments of choice. Amphotericin B can be given subcutaneously 0.5 to 0.8 mg per kilogram diluted in 0.45% saline containing 2.5% dextrose, 400 ml for cats, 500 ml for dogs less than 20 kilo and 1000 ml for dogs more than 20 kilo, 2 to 3 times per week can be given. Also, amphotericin B lipid complex can be given 1 to 2 mg per kilogram for cats or 2 to 3 mg per kilogram for dogs and it can be given 3 times per week for 12 to 15 treatments. Flu cytosine can, all, can be used alone, however drug resistance may develop, so combination therapy with amphotericin is recommended. Coming to the prognosis. Prognosis is favorable in most cases provided diagnosis is obtained sufficiently early before dissemination or before the development of irreversible lesions and patients are, and owners are cooperative to provide a long course treatment for months and follow up for years. Although information on outcomes is quite limited, it seems that cats have a more favorable prognosis than dogs or horses, which develop more frequently lower respiratory disseminated and neurological disease associated with high, higher mortality. Now let's see the prevention methods. Free roaming cats in rural areas are potentially more exposed to cryptococcus even though urban cats can be contaminated through PGN guano and according to ecology the presence of avian guanos particularly PGN droppings and some decaying vegetation substrates such as eucalyptus leaves may be considered a risk factor. A knowledge of local fungal habitats that carry the largest risk of exposure about seasonal variations in the production of infectious propagules could be useful to develop preventive measures for both the human and animal infection. So that's all about cryptococcus. So this is the third video among systemic mycosis uh, uh, which uh, followed blastomycosis and uh, histoplasmosis. So maybe in the next video we will see coccidiomycosis. If you like the video, like it and share it with your friends. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. See you soon with another video. Thank you.